Assalamu alaikum. Good afternoon, listeners. It's me, Suleiman Ben Swai. If you give me a minute, let me share this video and I'm on my timeline and um, on my page, and I'll get back to you soon. Assalamu alaikum, good afternoon listeners, it's me Suleiman Ben Suare coming back on Facebook Live. Um, discussion today would be uh, the desperation of Barrow and the failure of an effective opposition uh, posing a risk to our national security. I am, um, if I say the word opposition, it just don't mean the political parties. It means us as individual and accountability, and we'll get to that. Um, the state of national security is really fragile due to the ineffectiveness of this government, but due to corruption as well. Incompetence, corruption, and the only agenda now is to salvage and salvage one thing is to salvage Barrow and the continuity of Barrow government. And um, we are three months to elections. Um, do we have hope that our democracy will survive? Do we have hope that the change, if change is going to happen, is it going to be a transformative change or not? These are the things we should ask ourselves. This is the thing we should ask ourselves. Right now, we are hearing a lot. And I can tell you from what is coming on from government, um, it's one agenda. Whilst everything else, the reality is in, in that country, is neglected. And, and um, the, there's technically the institutions are non-functional. That's why we have the problem we have. But again, we, why do we have this problem? Because we don't have an effective opposition. The opposition to Barrow should not be only opposition to Barrow. How do we oppose to Barrow? How do we make sure we hold him accountable? And that accountability will be drawing up the attention of the people to really what matters. I mean, in the um, in the in the country, things that will really make a change in the people's life. It's not only to oppose Barrow for Barrow to give away for another political party or another leader. And I'll tell you one thing. I mean, elections are a tricky situation. And um, we don't even know who the candidates will be. We don't even know who the candidates will be. Then what we should be really worried about is, it's not about an individual leader. We should be worried about a leadership. What leadership do we have in the country? And that's not based on a political party. That's based on every sector in that country. Be the private sector, be the I mean, public sector, or the uh, civil society. Because none of these sectors are performing well. In order to guarantee the stability, we have to do more. We have to do more. And that, what we do more is to use the democracy that we fought for to ensure the check and balance system works. Yes, it's only three months. To ma make sure that freedom that we have is being utilized effectively. And there's no point just forming political parties for the sake of it, or being in politics for the sake of it. We can have the best ideas. But those ideas cannot be I mean, 
uh, will not materialize if you don't have the, um, the, the the opportunity or create that opportunity to make sure we influence um, I mean, I mean, I mean inf influence the policies. How do we influence the policies? Yes, the best place would be in government. That's why it's important to win elections. But it's not only being in government. We can still be in the opposition and be effectively influencing the change. It's sad due to the fallout. And that's history for us. And this is not unique to Gambia. It's the, it's the problem we deal with in developing countries. It's an issue of mindset, um, belonging, sense of belonging, and, 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 and the strategy used by the political leaders in order to control a narrative, in order to keep the status quo. That's why if we expect change, we have to look at the establishment itself. That's why in most cases, we look up to an anti-establishment to bring about change. In some cases, within the establishment, change will occur, but very rarely. But in other cases too, becoming an anti-establishment does not guarantee change. We have seen in the case of Zambia, Chiruba came in and, and deposed, uh, I mean, I mean the, 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 the old man. I mean, which was a one-party state and went into multi-party. Chiluba came in, I can remember the eve of the elections over BBC. The profile of Chiluba and everything being talk, talked about. Chiluba become the worst government that, 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 that I, mean, I, mean, I mean, Zambia ever had. Zambia is still struggling with that, uh, 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 those problems. And um, this is the same story in other countries. Our neighboring country, Senegal, with the progress they have after independence, from saying our government passed on within the establishment to, 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 to Abdi Diouf, and it went on, and it, yes, the, uh, it changed again, but still within the establishment of Wada, because Wada became an establishment, because he stayed so long in opposition, he became an establishment. And Wada tried, and, and, and Macky Sall came out of the establishment and headed an anti-establishment. This is very important to note. Macky Sall was within the establishment. He served as Prime Minister, he served as Interior Minister, and the last position he served was as the uh, Head of Parliament, the, 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 the President of Assembly National, which is the Speaker of the House, which is very powerful in any country, especially in Senegal. But he came out by being destructive, being defiant against his um, mentor or leader, and that gave him the credit to be termed as an anti-establishment. The civil society was organized. Yana Mar was out there. And the Senegalese intelligentsia, the, the, the elites of Senegal, um, rejected what Wada wanted was a coronation of his son to be a president and the corruption that ensued in Senegal. What did they do? They came out and backed Makisal as an anti-establishment. And the fact of this is not that Maki came as an outsider in the race where you have other established political parties in the opposition but the I mean, small margin that he had over them, um, they, they, they went on onto the second round to back him rather than to back Wada. If it was only opportunity, Wada was already in the incumbent, and Wada was known to be a very generous person with the state coffers, obviously. But Wada could have made uh, many deals with the or other members of opposition, but he was rejected. He was rejected because of Senegal wanted an anti-establishment. Senegal wanted to move away from the coronation, from, from the, tampering of the tampering of constitutions in order to prolong themselves. I mean, self perpetuation Senegal wanted to move away from the corruption. And this was the mandate um, um, Macky Sall had from Senegal. 
But what happened today? He went on to do the same thing. He he tampered with the constitution again. They did an amendment in order to have a, a way out to debate. I mean, cancellation of his fourth time to have a three term. Now Senegal, with the corruption, we all know about the, I mean, had about the oil and other corruptions, um, scandals in Senegal. And then Senegal is, is very tense right now. We have seen the marginalization of the opposition. And another um, lesson we have to learn is Sonko came out as an anti-establishment. And Sonko today has his, his position or his passive, his movement is positioned as, as the main opposition because of the entire established opposition has been marginalized because of they went with a deal or whatever it is with Makisal. Now, if we look at the solution, if we try to understand this uh, comparisons, that's where we look for solutions. It does not necessarily how small your party is. What is important is what do you influence to bring about the change? When Macky Sall came in as a president, it was small parties that influenced the intelligence. And, and, and those small parties, being the civil society, the Yanama mainly, I mean, with the youths, I mean, the small, other small political parties, and the intelligence, what I mean, as the elites, the a minority of uh, Senegalese educated class that decided to back, I mean, this movement, and that movement ensured Macky Sall became president. Right now, a similar, sim I mean, I mean, a very similar, similar scenario is coming out within the chain in Senegal because of the marginalization of opposition now. Um, I mean, from, from one time, the second time, one of the youngest politicians now is standing a chance. But that does not mean Sonko is going to win the next election. Still, now it's politics, it's very early within the establishment itself, just as Macky Sall came out of the establishment to be the candidate for an anti-establishment, or just as, I mean, or, or to come out, I mean, there might be someone else within the establishment that can come out and take it from Sonko. And why do that happen? That's another thing in politics. That's how we present ourselves. What strategy do we use? How do we communicate? How do we give hope and assurance to people? Hope and assurance that what opposition gives out. Opposition does not build anything. What you build is that hope and assurance uh, that people will be better off. Is by exposing, engaging, and giving out solutions that, that 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 will give hope to the people. And being radical can bring you votes, but being radical to can 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 deny you to form a government. It's politics. It's politics. That's why again. It does not guarantee. But one thing it guarantees is Sonko is part of the change in Senegal. Pastif is part of the change in Senegal. There is no, I mean, without the, the, the movement as Pastif is, Senegal cannot see another transformation or change in leadership. Macky Sall could have done that easily because he has already marginalized the, 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 uh, the, 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 um, the, um, the, the established political parties. Now, what he's doing. Uh, uh, tried to do was to marginalize the civil society, but now the the uh, Sonko that he thought w would have been less of a threat now have I mean I mean uh, occupied that vacuum that the established political party have left. That now there's a possibility of, of a revival of, of an establishment, just as he did I mean some time ago and become a president. We learn from these things, and um, what's the reality of our in the Gambia. There's no political party in the Gambia, or, or there's no political party in the country, in, in the world that like their leaders to be criticized or or to be held accountable. Not even in America, not in the UK. I tell you, the diehard of every political party will come out and, and they defend. We have seen it in Trump, we have seen it in, 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 in other um, I mean, uh, parties. But the problem we have in Gambia is disengagement. It's as if our political parties disengage and God knows what they're waiting for. This is a fact. From whenever this government came in, and it has been a tradition in the Gambia actually, political parties technically disengage till elections, a few months to elections.
But this time around, even it's getting worse. Even few months the election, technically political party are disengaged. We have seen the term, the 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 the, the um, registration of, of of voters and everything else. Mainly, the two political parties that was really engaged was the UDP and G, uh, GDC. Yes, the other political parties might have been engaged probably due to their capacity or whatever it is, but I think that they could have even done, done more. I mean, a lot, there's a lot of strategy, a lot of ways that you maximize your, your impact. It's not on the size of the people that follow you today, but what you represent for the time of election for people to, uh, to convert. Because um, there will always, I mean, up to the day of elections, there will be people that will decide in that day. Up to the point of putting the, uh, I mean, marble into this, where some people will decide. I mean, every day, every minute of, of, of I mean, we have matters in this. Government opposition party is disengaged. There are, there are a lot of things going on. A lot of things going on. We have not seen an effective engagement. Even the UDP, yes, they go out there, but how effective are they? They are very effective in holding on to their supporters. How effective are they in holding back? Not very effective. And these are things that self-diagnosis should be taken. That's why we have this conversation. I mean, that's the, that's the same, I mean, to, to other political parties, or even, even a worse off on other political parties. How do they engage government? How do they hold things accountable? We have seen the, um, I mean, how the government come, come with anything and get away with it. We have seen the COVID uh, I mean, situation. How did we, did we hold the government accountable? No. No. These are serious issues, the COVID corruption. I mean, I mean, and, and as I said, the, I'm, I am saying opposition, I'm just not saying the political parties. I'm saying even the press, uh, how do they I mean, perform? And we'll get to the press later. But the COVID, in the, how the COVID was managed. And now the COVID is, I mean, the amount of people dying now is even more than the amount that have that di died, I mean, I mean, last year already. And every day we are hearing it. And most of them are COVID. Yes, I know we don't want to say it. Within our families, we admit it. But we don't want to come out to act and say this, something that could help. God knows how many people I know now that their family members have admitted to me, yeah, it was COVID. But you don't hear them come out to say it was COVID. We'll see the rest in peace, but we'll not say in COVID. But what are the politicians talking about, about this COVID? I mean, where are the health spokesperson? I mean, I mean about what's happening. What about what about the other effects? I mean, what are they talking about? How are we going to deal with this? Because of, I mean, the next minute we are going to talk about our tourism. Tourism is there. Do we hear any political party talk about tourism? These are the sectors. We we have to revive tourism. Do, do we talk about it? No. With all the tourism corruption, hundred million dollars, I mean dollars or something like that, been given for I mean I mean I mean the tourism um, I mean stimulus, and it's disappeared. We don't hear about it. Everything goes to parliament, come parliamentary committees, and next minute is die off. The, the the development projects for for the tourism. Do we hear about them? No. Let's go on. We can go on and keep on going. No. The statements coming out from the president, no. These are statements that we have to tackle from every level, but mainly it's tackled on social media. I mean, on social media, yeah, we can have, um, we can say certain I mean, political party members would speak up about it more. But I am not talking about the level of social media. Very important, I'm saying, because it's what is holding the government accountable. I am talking about the executive levels of political parties. What do they do? What strategy are they doing? Where are they? But you see the quality of, of I'm, I'm not belittling anybody, but the, the representation of the debate um, in our media houses, the kind of pe people, uh, the I mean, I mean, engagement do, do, we, do we hear? Hardly we have anything sufficient or near sufficient uh, on the debate of national issues uh, on our part in a uh, underground, be it any, any uh, these things. They do try, uh, what the problem is, this, this thing the press would have to find out. The uh, opposition accountability and the measures. 
what measures are we taking for accountability? I mean, when bills are passed and all these things we need for total scrutiny. Do we have it in the Gambia? No. No. And if I come to certain, I will go to certain um, and, um, um, events that we, we, we need to talk about. I mean, what is the opposition strategy in winning elections? What is the opposition strategy in winning elections? You see, we have to be very careful. We have to base things on strategy. We have to be realistic. I know no opposition will come on in the open to say that we don't have chance of winning. But deep down, we should admit that we are strength. Deep down, we should, I mean, I mean, see where we can, um, how how we can be effective. As I said, we can be part of the change. We can be part of the winning and elections in many, many, many ways. Are we doing that? Absolutely not. Yes, the now is a given. Should it be a given at this time of elections? No. And this I am addressing the other political parties more here. Because is it is it what we all we can see at Barrow would address the UDP entirely. Because Barrow want this to be Barrow and UDP. And UDP will be happy for that. To see that look. It's us to lose. What Barrow is doing is saying that it's the UDP to lose. It's the UDP to beat me. Is that good for the Gambia? No, absolutely not. That's not an effective, I mean, I mean democracy. In, 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 develop, the, in developed countries, it's the reality, yes. But even for, I mean, and things to transform in many forms, in developed countries, you will have to have a, a that way. I'll give you an example. Why is it effective in German, Germany? Because of the, be the Christian Democrat, be, 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 be the Social Democrats, be, 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 be the right, right or the left, whatever it is, most of the cases, in fact, is so competitive that they have to end up in a collision. And collision work. Whoever said that is lying, it works. It's, it depends on the people in a collision. Whether they respect themselves, they, they, they have not control and in half. In Germany, it works. How many governments have been in collision in Germany? And we can see how effective German governments are. In the United Kingdom here, collision work. A five-year collision, in fact, a trans that, that was a transformation. The, 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 the liber Liberal Democrats and the Conservative came in and agreed on a five-year term. UK, we never had a term, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean a fixed term. What we had was uh, unwritten constitution and understanding that the prime minister can call up elections. I mean, at certain period, he can call, call up, turn up election in three years, in two years. Uh, all this thing, but when they, I mean, negotiated for our, when the opposition, um, when they, um, when there was a hung parliament, there's no absolute, I mean, winner here between the Labour and the Conservative, they needed to, I mean, I mean, form a government. In order to form a government, they negotiated. Yeah, they let them negotiate with Labour, but they thought no. And they went and negotiated with Conservative and forced him first to say that we have to tie this down. Tie it on down on two things. We have to have a time limit. I mean, not a time limit for say, a fixed time, sorry. What that means is, the conservatives were the, I mean, small partner. They don't want to go into government and, and the, the prime minister to just turn out and decide. Decide when elections would happen. So that they can do, do that at, the, at an opportunist time so that they, they can win. They agreed on that. The other thing they agreed was policies. The Lib Dem said there are certain things are core policies on us. We have to bring that in. You have to support that. You have to support our environmental position on this, that, that, that. You have to support our some, uh, our social projects, this, this, that. Yes, and that's where the conservative said this too, and they bargained. And one thing that the Lib Dems bargained for, and it cost them, was tuition fee. Tuition fee. And the, the, the Lib Dem, I mean, campaign on, 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 on in fact, uh, dissolving the tuition fee, but they turned around to go into government and accept an increase of the tuition fee. And that was, and uh, most of their MPs were sitting in university towns, they lost the vote. That's politics, that's election. But to see, it works. 
the minute they went back to parliament, what they did, they voted the legislative, legislative that needed to be passed. They voted what needed to be passed. They agreed on that. And they voted the, uh, the fixed term. And, uh, and it became a fixed term. It works. These are things we need to learn. In, 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 in America, where it's Democrats and, and conservative, we have seen how the corporate, uh, corporate entities are powerful because of, I mean, they hedge their bets. They have to support the Democrats and they support the conservatives. And, and they hedge their bets in time of elections, they, they, they swear. And what they swear for is what that government will give them. And the people would end up voting the same people. And as in a developing country, we have an opportunity to disallow that. We cannot allow only an established position to stand. We have to create a third way. Just as the fluidity, what happened in Senegal can be replicated in the Gambia. Whoever would win the elections will win the elections very competitively. Then that's the, uh, that's, that, that's the benefit of our democracy. That will benefit our democracy. But allowing the strategy borrowed borrow ones is me and the UDP. Now let me go out there and swell the UDP, say anything about the UDP, knowing that the other parties would stand back and let me deal with the UDP that way. And this is causing tensions. And this is where the, I'll go into um, in, in detail when, when we get there. What is the other political parties doing in this sense? Why are they not into the fray? As I said, Usman Sonko. It was, um, I mean, we all know it was, um, I mean, I mean the, 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 the established political parties against uh, Wada. It was the established political parties against Pakistan. But when Usman Sonko came into the game, Usman Sonko made sure he becomes the anti-establishment candidate. By what, I mean, shooting, shooting at, at Makisal. Very strategic. Yes, I mean, you hardly hear Usman Sonko say anything about the opposition. Whatever he says about the opposition is trying to bring the opposition on board. And technically, this is how, within a short period, the establishment, I mean, um, uh, established political parties ma got marginalized because of they went into bed with Makisal. But Sunko hold, holds his ground. Now he became the credible opposition party. That's why I said we have to find a strategy to win the elections. UDP is doing their bit. That's what they believe. Is it enough? That's for UDP strategists to think about it. Now they are in position, and, and that's what Barrow is doing, saying that it's only UDP to beat me. That's why Barrow doesn't uh, uh, address any other political party. But that's not good for us. What are the other political parties doing? We have to find a strategy. And there is a strategy to move in a position in order to be part of it. What does, does that mean? If I was strategizing for any other party, this this would be time the small parties because of now we say the borough or, or UDP. Behind the scenes, people will uh, uh, admit. But how do other parties become effective in, in, in about this change? I'll tell you, there should be a way to look at to form government. How do, how can we be effective to be the parties that form government? Yes, how do we come in as a coalition to form a government? How can we be effective to form a movement in this process that we might, we might not win the elections, but we'll be competitive in a sense that come the parliamentary, because of his short period between a, a president and parliamentary. And if you take all your resources, that's what used to happen with the opposition and, and Jamme. Take all your resources and go after the incumbent. And, and after the elections, uh, the, the incumbent win by a slight ma margin. What do, what do happen? You don't have no more resources, no more energy to go into parliamentary, which is a short period. Now, if, if the, these other parties can form themselves anti establishment of movement, they might not win the elections, but they will be competitive. And that competitiveness, there is a way they build themselves to make sure they will have enough seats. I mean, um, I mean, marginal seats to win in the parliamentary. 
and build that on the local government. And the next time round, you will be ultimate. This is, this is the sort of strategy Sonko. Sonko knew he was not going to win the election. He came at 12%. But what does that say? In, 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 he has won areas that people never thought he was going to win. Because he, he targeted his, his resources, his attention to those uh, areas. He, 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 he understands his strength and he looks for his consequences. And he tried to win this consequences. He made a lot of mistakes. And this time around, he was trying to I mean, amend those mistakes this time around. But un uh, unfortunately, too, we made a very... Uh, another mistake was to go to the Masai Palo. Whatever happens there, I tell you, it has affected his credibility. It's just that the government is less credible. That's why, I mean, I mean it's, it did not hurt. Or the government overdid it. Over the, overdid the, the um, I mean, I mean the way the government approached the situation. Some court have been finished. If you look at, um, let me give an example here. We're having a debate tonight. We're having a debate tonight. Ask yourself, how did the debate came about? The debate did not come out from a very constructive manner. It did not come about from consultation. Why don't we have consultation within us, opposition parties? The debate came about by default from agitation. Agitation. And Dr. Sisi said something in a, on a platform when he, yeah, he was on a, having a pl share a platform with uh, Mr. Sala, uh, Honorable Sala. And um, um, from there on, he did a tweet. We all know what tweet, tweet, tweets are. Tweets are just agitated. In most cases, to agitate, to, yeah, it, you can inspire because just characters, you, you cannot have enough to put. And Keksane went on there to, to, to challenge. Obviously, the doctor, I mean, was strategic to say, no, if I am to have the debate, I will have your party leader. I'm not going to have you. And people think that it's a disrespectful thing. No. I mean, this is politics. We have to be, uh, I mean, I mean, we have to be realistic. Every party would have to be very strategic. I would not advise my political party leader to go for a debate with a member of a political party. It's not that they look down on them because of education, status, or anything. No. It's the structures. Who is to win? Who is the benefit? If uh, you go into something as a political party, you look for your benefit. Political capital. That's not a political capital for CA. What the political political capital for CA was to sit, half Dr. C. C. and and and, and Mr. Uh, Honorable Sala. Then this thing came out of default. That's what I'm trying to hear. Why why many other initiatives could have been taken, and to have a, a, a discussion, conversation. I'll tell you, the civil societies have tried many ways to create a national. I mean, I mean, conference to create a national discourse and many behind the scenes, but political parties efficient will not have it, and that was the strength of, of the opposition to, to have this to bring the issues that we needed to put on the table at the national platform. But we have in a debate, the debate is coming out from agitation, not from consultation. If we are serious, we ha rather have consultations and, 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 and to, to come out with concepts and whatever it is in order to have, have this di discussion. Debate are very important in politics. But again, let us be careful what the debate is about and what, uh, what is going to be the outcome of the debate. And again, we, we, are, we might look at debates in the West. What does it do for the West? Look, there are different uh, opinions on, on debates on the world. Does it really matter? What does it change? Does it, I mean, change an undecided voter? Does it change, I mean, I mean uh, a decided voter? What is it about? It's about preparation. It's about this. Does it make a, uh, the, president, I mean, the person that wins the debate better? Does it make him win the elections? These are all things. All the same. There are a lot of things that go behind the scenes. A strategy. Going. But what I'm saying here is, What's the debate about? From agitation, we, uh, this debate came about. We have to make sure the debate is what it should be. 
why could we have I mean I mean lot of things that we needed to, to talk about in uh, what can bring us together not to be alien when the when the debate started or or, or the proportion of the debate or, or or whatever we saw the I mean I mean um, both parties pulling apart rather than I mean bringing in Peter I is pulling apart where she is pulling apart and other political parties sitting down worship. This is what was happening. And starting to say, you guys, this, you guys, this, you guys, this, you guys. That's what we are good at. Because if it was informed, if we, I mean, what stopped the political party leaders talking to each other? What stopped them coming up to, I mean, um, I mean, to, um, I mean, I mean to, to discuss issues, national issues? What, why can they, oh yeah, they can organize those debates. But again, it's politics. Some people would think, what do I have to benefit from this? That's why we have to find a way that every political party will see themselves to benefit. But point scoring is not going to. And I'll tell you, and this debate we're talking about, uh, it's sad that most of the people that have, uh, that can, that have time or the privilege to even listen to, to engage, uh, already have their mind made up. And most of the orders that don't have a mind made of what do they take away from the debate is just to go and sit down again. The most active people in our politics are people on the ground, are people that we need to engage. Does this debate, the, the debates we are going to form and have, are they going to target it to these people? That's why we have to look at the entirety of, of, of what we are doing as opposition. Let it be beneficial. Let it be effective. We have to hold accountability to be effective. Something came out. I don't know how it came out. A dialogue. Uh, I saw somewhere um, the spokesperson, uh, the, I think it's the spokesperson of the UDP, Tal, Mr. Uh, Funding Tal, said about a national dialogue. Yeah, we tried that before. We, we Civil society talked about that so many times. It's never... Um, better than uh, better late than never. Better late than never. Are we going to have this? Is just is it only going to be a statement? I hope the, um, Mr. Um, Ta Fanital meant this, and he will do what it takes, not only to come out to the press to give it, but to reach out to the 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 the, the, the opposition and and to I mean interparty whatever it takes in order to have this uh, conversation. We need this dialogue. These are the and. Um, this is time that we really need it, especially what is coming out from, from Barrow. The corruption and holding Barrow accountable. The country now is run on corruption. Because that's the strategy for Barrow. You see, incompetent and corruption, that's the two we have in the country. And we expect that country to be sustainable. Everything you have to do is just make sure you are in the books of power. Let them perceive that you support them. And I know most of, I know some people who are very corrupt that they perceive are supporting Barrow. They are not. They have to show that they're supporting Barrow. They're hedging their bets. They will jump. That's what they do. They jump to anybody who gets into government. You see, that's why I said, again, the people should benefit. If we are not careful, that's what happened. Barrow goes, another person come, and they'll come and take over. They, they do the state capture. And let us be very careful. There are some statements coming out. We are applauding certain people. There's an infighting going up with, within the what we call, we call the elites. I know Barrow have used elites, but people think that Barrow is referring to the UDP as elites. No, there's an infighting within a cabal. And... Um, I will not bring someone into it, but I think some of some people had Mohammed Jarrant at the GCCI, the Gambia Chamber of Commerce, and there's more written things. You see, when they realize that it's not likely, they're starting to hate their bets. And Gambia is a very small I mean, society, and things started to get out, and Barrow have heard some of these things, that some people are hedging their bets. The people that he taught, they were in support of him, now are hedging their bets. Because they can see their patrons are kind of associating with other groups. Now, 
this is what but i mean we'll get there anyway we'll get get there on that point what, what i'm saying is the corruption entirely the, the entire country anything you want you can do i just give an example of that petrol dump i mean uh, you I, I don't know how the person the neighbor even allowed that person to operate a, a, a petrol storage area in a residence you do anything in the gambia the police are not there to police you nobody there to police you People take the law into their hands because of the uh, government's not effective. That fire could have, I mean, ap apparently it kills one person. I'm not sure how true that is. May his soul rest in peace. And, but it could have killed more. The fire, fire could have spread to other houses. Why did that happen? And I bet the authorities know about this. But it's not only that place, many other places. Just to give you an example of this. Everywhere else you go, the Port Authority, GRA, let's go on, let's go on. Now the episode in KMC. And allegations in BCC. Now, it's even difficult to know what is actually happening here. One has to be very careful. One has to be very careful because of the politicization of matters. Because we don't have a press that is effective. What they do is come to Ben Suare, Ben give, give a story and they run with it. Or Ben they debunk this. They go to Mariama, Mariama do this. Uh, that's what they do. They don't even get to uh, get an expert opinion or to try to get to the root, I mean, uh, the things of it. No. I mean, to help people to, I mean, to understand. No. Now, people will be ping pong, ping pong, ping. But we all know that there will be vested interests. Entirely what happened now is very clouded. My, the penetration I have on social media, I mean, look, there's so much going on. I, I wish I can get to the bottom of this, but I can't. Because which version you're going to take? If you look at the mayors, I mean, most of it is, is adding up. But you look at certain things, you question, do, does the due process been followed? You ask yourself, Next minute, I mean, you look at the, the, the people being this thing. Obviously, you think, yeah, this is what should happen. But if you have a government that have a vested interest, politicized, that's why we feel everything is politicized. And we have to be very careful. The Local Government Act is a local government act of Yaja. It was amended. It was amended in a way that it gives executive powers to run the councils. The councils, and I said this during the uh, campaign, we are campaigning for mayors and everything. I don't think we understand how powerless our mayors are. What powers the president have? The powers vested on the uh, minister of local government in order to have control over how effective that is. That's why we have to be very careful how this thing is going to pan out. It's an election year. But we are Gambians are not going to benefit from the fallout. Yes, some people passively, but this is going to, uh, I cannot even say crystallize. Corruption is crystallized in Gambia. It's rampant. But if Barrow gets away without us, uh, they, we should find if the press, the press is not helping, but the opposition is not helping. The opposition should have come out. This is a, yes, this is a UDP uh, mayor under in, uh, controversy. But now, the, I'm not talking about the social media acti um, activities. I'm talking about the structures. PDIS, uh, GDC, uh, GFF, I mean, NUP. I mean, orders to come out and, 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 and hold. And then, they can put the lenses and uh, they can put the lenses on there that the government would be checked and KMC would be checked and they can call out for what that needed so that we can get the bottom of this if the mayor is is, is found wanting to be dealt with if the people under the mayor were found wanting to be dealt with to ensure that due, due process is gone through but the opposition is standing back watching now a tension is brewing and and i tell you that i know what the government wants it's an election year 
there should be an independent way of doing it so that the mayor is held accountable so that the issue is under the trans, uh, is transparent and what the outcome will be gathered. That's what would benefit Gambians. But if we play this partisan game for government to this thing, look, after, if, if Baro gets away with this one again, look at what happens to social security. What happened to social security? That it's just continuity of every corruption would just go on. Because Baro government would not ever investigate corruption. They don't want that. The Baro government doesn't want that. The entire government is absolute corrupt. They don't want us to open that kind of walls. This is why we have to be very careful in this. The failure of the press. The failure of the press. You see, I'll tell you one thing. Due respect to uh, the journalists and everything, and we cannot generalize. But in many instances, if you read a um, an, an article, you know who the article is written for, who is benefiting from that article. I mean, it's just it's, it's just crazy. And we want to blame our people for voting the wrong way? No, we are not doing what we're supposed to do to educate our people. They are just going on their loyalty, who, who they know. And because of there's no, I mean, independent press in that country. Hardly, hardly, hardly you have something independent. Anything within, and it's, some, some of it is not biased, it's incompetence. Some of it is not biased, it's incompetence, I believe. Because they don't get, look, you cannot go and write about an economic story when you don't have any grasp of economics you should find a way to get someone's opinion. Someone does have this thing, and you quote the person, this is an opinion of Alpha, Alpha holds economics or this, this is an opinion of this, because an accountant, this is an opinion of this, because a medical doctor, this is an opinion of this. But no, all they do is, Talib said this, Miss Martin said this, Mr. Bass said this, Mr. Bass said that, that's all. We have heard that, it's on voice notes. They go and copy the same voice note that we share around. You think how helpful that is? People that share would have to label and tell me who it is or what they think is important. At times they have to point me to the minutes because if not, I won't listen because there's so much of it. But that's what they do. They just go and reprint the voice note. We have had the voice note. What we need from an editor is to help us to get a background of this. That's, that's what we need. That's the feel of the press. We come on to the um, events that I'm talking about that we are not dealing with properly. Because we are seeing this as a UDP and NPP problem or Barra problem. That's what Barra wants. That's what UDP wants. UDP wants to be the party to beat Barra. That's what politics is. But is it what Gambia wants? What about the rest of the politicians? What do you want? Why are you not part of this conversation? If Barack keeps you out of the conversation, it's for you to keep, keep, keep yourself in the conversation. It's a national conversation. If Barack is keeping it, I'm um, saying, okay, what he's saying is affected. No. Then bring it in national conversation. Tell Barack that whatever you have in your backyard with your UDP, deal with that. But we are holding on to this. We want to know what this government is doing now with the COVID. The other day, a woman called me. I rarely take calls directly from um, from um, from um, from messenger, but I recognize the profile that someone that follows. And um, why she called was the state, um, the conditions at the RVTH. What is at the RVTH? Gloves, testing, the corruption, and everything. And she, they, she is trying everything. And you see, uh, yes, we hold the nurses responsible. We say, but look, the condition, I mean, the, there's no structure. There's no structure. The capacity is not there. The corruption of testing, um, testing equipment, apparently deliberately been sabotaged in order for services to go to other people who used to work for R R RVTH. This has allegations made. I am not a journalist. I don't have time to go, go and ex in, investigate every other thing that goes on. 
Yes, it matters because it concerns national security. But there is so free. The other issues that we have to deal with with physical security. Every other corner coming out. But the state of RVA, this sabotage, people doing it in order. Because someone is being paid to do that, to sabotage a testing machine. The person, you see, what a bad system does is it reduces us to animals, or even uh, lesser than animals. Why would anybody pay you? How much? And you say, how much? Yes, we are privileged. I say, not, I mean, how much someone has to pay you in order to do that? We don't think of that we are risking the life of others and we are killing other people. At that moment, all we know is if, if a referral goes to this thing, we get $100, $500. Or the person asks us to sabotage, we do this because the job goes. It's about money. That's what the country is reduced to. And as they said, the, 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 uh, the fish rots from the head. That's what um, uh, has been going on. And then, Adam Abaro admission and fabrications. We have to understand why this guy is uh, what Olafu calls Jafur. Because there's no sane person. I said to someone that either Adama is on drugs, but oh, Adama is so scared of life after presidency, he is out of control. What I mean that then his mindset, his mentally, he's not up there. Because these are things that nobody, ordinary people, would not go out to speak. You don't, because you, I mean, that's that's putting yourself in problem, trouble. That's a conf confession to crimes. Exaggerating things are not necessary, important. Because you think that it has to be. It's just, I, mean, I said, that that's, tells you the kind of president we have. When when he fabricated about taking nine bosses, seven bosses, five bosses, I don't really know. I mean, the effective transport system we have here, we have to take this, have to, uh, I mean, have to use every hour of the day until four hours to sleep, eat, and do other things. All those silly things. Which, I mean, just think of, why, what are you trying to prove? Who would believe this? Or if this happened even, how can you not organize your life better? Are you a smart person to live like this? How long? I mean, these are things people would have to ask. But we all know it's an exaggeration. We did different tests. We use our phones to check the distance and everything. It doesn't add up. It doesn't add up. But these are the kind of, And again, if you talk about your childhood, you say that you climb on a tree. Just say that I climb on a big tree. Why do you have to emphasize how big the tree is to try to put it in by measuring it? That tells you this something wrong with this person? Nobody. Kids exaggerate. Kids exaggerate. But even when kids exaggerate, they exaggerate things that can be understood. But not a grown-up, a president, to think about, okay, I'll talk about the tree. I climb, you climb a big tree, fine. As a child. Is that heroic? No, uh, we beat it 500. And again, tells you the problem we have. And prob people around him now coming out after the shock. They had the shock and everybody had an amnesia. And now they want to come out not to justify. No, it's not the tallness or it's the width and this thing. <laughs> I'm, uh, <laughs> if you even say a sutu, a sutu, I'm not talking about a tree, a sutu, a forest. How many of our forests were that thick? I mean, what just tells you the kind of people we have? They will try to just find that. But that tells us more about this person. It's not about the 500 million. No, it's about the state of that mind of that person. He is very scared. If he is not on coke, he must be very scared to be in that, uh, this thing to, to, to justify. The things about the graveyard, you see, all these kind of things you can understand. How can someone sit down and talk about this? A person. I, I know of, look, I know of people, even families. I've seen mother and, and, and daughter go to a marabu. And the mother will go in and the daughter will come out and sit outside and give privacy to the mother. I have seen them, both mother and daughter, go in, 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 a, in a marabu's house. And later the mother will come out and give privacy to the daughter. I've seen friends do that. I have seen parents do that with their children. What does this tell you about privacy? 
and other things. But again, tells you the mindset of the of these uh, people about funding. The guy now just want people to believe that he was rich. Again, this is fear of what is coming because he knows that he's absolutely corrupt. He knows that within a short time, people have seen this opulent and everything that he did. Now, he thinks that he can justify. That's the danger here. Because if any, if, if, if any person can think that they can justify a wealth of that nature, people knowing your background, everything was televised. You turn around and want to justify that saying that I was wealthy. Thinking that you repeated many times, Gambian would believe that you were wealthy. Yeah, they may try, they didn't work. You want to I mean, repeat it many times, it is going to wonder. He has fear of leaving presidency. And he said it. That, uh, I mean, I, I, uh, even if I uh, come out of government, I will stay in this country. He's lying. He's lying. He will run. He will run. He will not hand over a government if he loses elections. He will say that because to just, I will sit here because of everything I have. All those things are fabrications. But he is fabricating for a reason. His wealth. His funding. Trying to he continued to say try to say that nobody funded him. Nobody funded his presidency. To disregard the contribution of the diaspora. We'll look at that. I'll play the quick quick, quick, quick videos for us to see. On the issue of competency, this guy even is coming out for now for competency. This guy who came and admitted that he was not competent. Now he's coming out of competency. He, he started that saying that during the negotiations, he had to even I mean, ask for a private negotiation, I mean, I mean, to sit privately with the negotiators. And he said that after his intervention, everything went to, to disregard the efforts done by um, I mean, I mean, Honorable Halifa Salah and others, his team. Now he's saying that because of what he did. He started that. Now he took take credit for everything. Now, talking about campaign strategy in campaign, this is what we do. We have seen this. The guy was televised. Everything was televised. The guy gave credit where credit due. He said, look, now, even before we get to place, when we get, before we get to this, and people come and we ask them, they said, what's a group? What's a group? He gave credit to what's a groups. And everybody now, cross my, he said this before, that the, gave credit to the diaspora, gave credit to, to what's a group about uh, getting to Krosma, Krosma is the Johnsons, before getting there people are even in the night they waiting. No, now it's about him because of his, um, his kind of putting in a spirit, spiritual way that he was meant to be a president, this is why he's, everything's about him. It's no more about the collision and, and, and about the team. Tells you the kind of person we have. If we mistakenly vote this guy in, that would be confirmation. He will even come now, what else? What I said was true. Everything I did was right. Now, that's why Gambian voted me again. This is what we should be careful of. As I said, it's up to us Gambians to do that change. We are Gambians. We have, we are, and we'll get to it. He said it, and you can see his strategy, KMC, BAC. These two constituencies are that make the difference. And we look talk about that. What are we doing? What is the opposition doing? To, 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 to. I mean, this guy should not even have a conversation with these people because he's completely failed them. How is it easy? How is, how is it difficult to go out there to make a case on the people to vote for you? That's what we need. We need to go out there and make that case. Not to be sitting on, 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 on our corners or with, uh, within our parties talking to ourselves. Let's go and talk to the people. Your size of party might not matter today. If you walk on it, it will matter tomorrow because it will influence the votes. There are many ways you kill a cat. It continued again um, on competency. He did that. On institutions, he's trying to talk about institutions. We'll play the video. Saying so, that my institutions, this, this, this. This guy is, just doesn't even know what institutions are. Because of, we can see him contradict himself undermining institutions. By trying to politicize the imams, you and the imam, imam, I mean, I mean, the Council of Imams, or whatever you call them, they are part of civil society. They should not be politicized. They are a sector of their own. They have a role to play. 
we cannot have everybody to be in political parties. Just imagine what that does. We'll get to that. I mean, he talked about development in a way that would just tell you that the guy doesn't care. He doesn't know and he doesn't care. Because he, I mean, the, I will this thing so that people can have their warambas and walk in Serakuna as they like. He thinks that's what development is. He's not talking about our COVID. He's not talking about, about uh, hospitals, not about schools, not about youth development, not about our agriculture, the, I mean, uh, the things. I mean, not about anything else, not about fighting corruption. No, he's taking us so that you call him as Banjun. What, who would wear them? What I'm bas I mean, this, I mean, it's hard that that's what we have to listen to. But where is the alternative? Who is holding them accountable on this, apart from social media? Where are the political parties on the ground going to tell people? I mean, I mean, engage the people. I, I, I have seen a lot been done like the likes of uh, Quran, I like the Quran on others. But I mean, there's a lot more to be seen. What what actually Elijah Kurang is working on? Is it a political party or is it um, this thing? That's what we think. And but time is going and things. Yeah, we have seen him engage, going, I mean, to engage the youths and these, these are things that really matters. But how can we be realistic with all these achievements to make sure it's, it's effective? These things we need to see. Um, you see, the, the, the concentration on attack on UDP and tribalism. You see, now you can see the strategy here. He does that constantly. Because that's the narrative he wants. Barrow doesn't want us to talk about anything else. He wants us to talk about UDP. He wants us to talk about violence. He wants us to talk about tribalism and everything to be centered on the UDP. The only time yesterday you said it was elites. And think about it. The word elites is new in Barrow's vocabulary. We know who those elites are. The people that he's falling out with. The people that think that Barrow is not doing it. He's not getting successful in, in to win the elections. Now they try starting to relate themselves to others. Now he's going to attack them. He wants to attack them. Because, yeah, they think they're educated. They think they, they will, will, will get to that. I mean, this issue, it's not. Barrow is playing it, and this is risking posing a resistance on us. If we think that we can stand back, Jamie did it. Jamie did it. You see, now we have to be very careful. I know even during Jamie time, people, some people fell for it, some people were convenient. They don't want to confront Jamie. Now, let's blame anybody else, but not Jamie. Are we going to fall for that again? It's a democracy. If you don't like UDP, PDOIS are there. If you don't like PDOIS, CA is there. If you don't like CA, GDC is there. If you don't like GDC, um, NUP is there. If you don't like NUP, GFF is there. If you don't, uh, there are so many parties. But you don't allow the narrative to be dictated by power. It's not to our interest. It's not to our interest. We move on to, on to that. The reality is on the ground. You see, this is, um, let me just establish this and play some of these videos before coming out. Um, um, the difficulties with APRC. We all have seen that fail up. You see, everything Barrow wanted. He wanted a political party, it failed. He, I said here, he cannot build a political party. He didn't have the structure seeding. You see, and a political party has to be inspired. You have to have a vision. You have to be inspired. There's no ins the guy is not inspired even in politics. He's inspired in making wealth. Then anything around him is about making wealth. That's what he created. That's why he had a problem to create a political party. And we all saw what happened with the NPD. We could, they cannot even, as a, go as a sitting government, cannot even have a congress to have a proper executive and everything else. The because structures are not there. The capacity is, is lacking. Now, he half a struggle with that. Um, I mean, and now we have, I mean, I mean and, and the other thing he thought was would be easy to buy the people in. I mean, he failed in, 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 in dismantling the UDP because that's one, one strategy. He failed in dismantling the GDC. He thought that if he used money, he can get everything out. I'm not saying that people, are, people have not left the UDP to join him or GDC. But what I mean, he wanted to have that, I mean, I mean base of, still he didn't have a base. The, the NRP that he used even to, to as a platform, have uh, disintegrated. 
NRP people don't talk about it. We don't even see Ahmad back in that. He's having a trouble in that. Now, the other thing he thought was, I can get the um, APRC with money. Now that becomes difficult. We also have seen how it pans out. We also have seen that APRC episode, how it pans out. And finally, we are up to this point of now, he is writing a statement saying that uh, Yajam is not coming back. Technical wants to say. Because the rumors, we knew where the rumors came out. We knew who people that have access to, uh, to uh, Guinea Conakry paying newspapers to write stupid stories about the non-existent protocols or whatever nonsense it, it is. Uh, and those people were agitating because of the timing. Bayajama will come to do this, do this. We, we had that before. But he was forced to come out. He was agitated. They came out and said, no, Yajame, that's not true. Now, tell him, I said, he's scared of Yajame coming out. We said this before. And now it's a confirmation of the, this thing. And the APRC themselves have been see, uh, seen for what, what the party is. It's about Yajame. That's what the Yajame and the grassroots and the other, the opportunists in the uh, um, executive who want to keep, to maintain their lifestyle. And they will go with Barrow. That's, uh, this is, but that's not what Barra wanted. Barra wanted the entire APRC or the uh, APRC as an entity to join him. He cannot. That failed. Now, the, as we said, the incompetence and everything else, the motivation of finance, we have seen the infighting within the NPP. The Maimuna Balde and the Maimuna Sise Dabo is going on. The, that thing was not settled. The um, women mobilized opposition. We've seen Barrow how he played that uh, that game. One minute, my Munasi said, Davo thought he ha she had the upper hand up to the meeting at Birkama, if people can remember. And statements made, made there. Because that time he wanted to consolidate, to ensure that the, he have, I mean, put the weight completely with, with, uh, between my Munasi said, Davo and the UDP. He said everything to, to make my Munasi said, Davo con I mean, comfortable to cut the um, umbilical cord from the UDP. And once me, that guy, the lady was trapped, that's it, abandoned. Now, um, I mean, uh, the, the um, Maimuna Balik um, won the contest and was uh, coronated as the woman mobilizing. And it's all about money. Because who runs half the budget? That's all. Everybody comes in just to get the money. It's all about money. But again, that's why this is what I keep on saying. Now, within the NPP, we have seen the APRC camp, AP, and NPP, saying that because these are the people in uh, APRC, they have the money, Sidinjai, we all seen the pro property Sidinjai have. Sidinjai have transformed himself again within four years, just as, um, I mean, this is, even to have a mansion in his uh, homestead and, and have one in the common within four years. But now it's about the money here, and now the Maimuna Bale and others are termed as the APRC, Dusano and others are termed as the uh, UDPs, and you have the other group, and that's one uh, part of the equation. The other part of the e equation is tribe. Now they're saying the Fulas, they're saying the Mandinkas, and the Sarovales, within the same NPP. These are, they, you see... It's our people, our people, I mean, other than the Gambians, I don't have done that problem. This, the opportunists, be the politicians or want to be politicians, be the want to be activists, these are the people that go on to sell this tribe agenda for their own interest. They don't care. Now, within themselves, that's what's going on. We all here have the evidence They're, that infighting is going on. It's all about money. It's not about state affairs, not about anything else. They are not uh, talking about, I mean, I'm having dispute due to principles or anything else. It's about who, who controls, who have influence. Now, all these things going on, he is, he has a problem. Now, the other thing we've seen with Barrow, now he's, he, he's realized this. Barrow said during the uh, Tubaski, he had the Alcalos or, who, or, or those people were, three people there, and he said that I know the election has to be decided in KMC and BAC. Now he wants a piece of that. That's why I said, what are we doing as political parties? I've seen, um, I mean, what are we doing? Now we are watching Barrow, thinking that Barrow is doing that pretty big. This is our opportunity. I said, I, I mean the opposition. Because the, these areas would be, should be the easiest place for the opposition to win over.
votes. Be it CA, be it PRIS, be it NUP, be it UDP, opposition. Because if you make the case against the establishment, are they better off from before? And the other um, um, angles is for parties to think about. How do I make this to be mine? To get the vote. Are we doing that? Are we doing that? He knows it's the fact of the registration is there. No, what he cannot do that. Barack cannot go out there to face the people. His people cannot go out there to face people. And he's desperate now. He's bringing, he brought the Alcalos. He brought the Imams. You see, I, I can't go back on to say the influence. Look, these people have no more influence as people think. I'm not talking about that influence. I mean, and majority are not what guarantees them even those Imams would support him. Or those Alcalos. These are, look, what uh, the opportunity, what Jawara had. No other president will have in the Gambia. The, the level of penetration Jawa had with incumbency will know what it will have. What Jaya Jame had, no other president will have in the Gambia. It was the fear factor that entrenched dictatorship can, uh, can make Alcalos, Imamos, and everybody to do whatever. Because we have seen what he did to them. Arrest them from Bill Kama, from everybody. Arrest them, kill them, beat them, humiliate them. Discharge them. Well, these are the, you cannot do that. Now these people are free to make up their mind. Do you know those imams who influence them? <coughs> they are, in most cases, their families, their daughters or sons. The transactions have changed. Yes, the respect now that we have. I can tell you, if my parents were alive, <laughs> I know the influence I have on them is greater than any outsider, any outsider for that matter. If my father was the imam, the influence I'll have from him is greater than any insider. On facts, yes, on facts would be. And we know if you go against Barrow on facts, it's easy. It's easy. That's why we need to make sure we do this transaction. If you say that you support the CA, it's not only on social media. What are you doing to penetrate the, this thing? Because your influence, I'll tell you, you'll be surprised how much that will do. If you say you support the PDIS, if you say you support the uh, UDP, if you say you support the GDC, in the diaspora here, it's not only the money that you can give, not the support you come and so on social media. It's what you can do on the ground. We need an effective opposition. We need this <coughs> election to be competitive. Barrow should be out of the equation. And Barrow can be out of the equation. That's how poor a candidate he is. And he's desperate. But we have to be careful of a desperate person. You see, even your child, if you confront your child, you have to give them a way to escape. They are desperate. But in this case, he's the executive. There's no way we have a choice. And because of the powers vested on the executive, we have a problem. Now, a desperate man with that close powers it will do desperate um, things. And if we are not careful, we control it. It will be a, dis I mean, it will be a, a disastrous outcome. And this is what we need to uh, avoid. We had um, Michael Todembo Boya. I know people are having problem. Why do imams go and answer to the president? Look, we don't know what the invitation was. And if an imam is invited by the executive, those imams will have to answer the executive. Some people say, no, the executive come and answer the imam. No. <clears throat> On a Juma day, if the, if the executive goes to the Juma, the imam is the leader. If he goes to Tubaski, is the leader. But on a national day, if the president invites you, I mean, you have to go and listen. The difference is, if you listen to the president, you need to respond to the president with facts. And if you do it right, that president would not invite you again for, for mere invitation or do anything else. But that's where my disappointment is. Uh, uh, again, I don't know what because of the censor what had happened. Now they have to censor themselves. 
because of again the incompetency and they know this and the message came out some of the message came out i know most of these have been cut off but even that what came out was enough for people to hold this person accountable but are we holding them accountable on the ground i mean the executive political parties are they doing the right thing to hold this uh, president accountable <laughs> on, on inviting the imams and statement made to the imams why do you want the imams to be and then Boboja, my brother saying that the imams have to be political having a political um, having um, a voter card and um, um i mean i'm um, sympathize with a political party and vote for a political party does not make you political you can still have your independence as an imam if you as an imam the imams should not be now imagine if i know that my imam is is aprc or my imam is npp or my imam is udp and this is my imam now my imam coming to the members that's what he said to tell me to do this thing. What do you think? Do you think I respect that Imam? Because I am not NPP? Well, what do you think? The Imam, with everything that's going on, the Imam is not telling me that one want to make convince me to vote for the president? You yeah, I respect that Imam? Now, if we have a dispute, if I am uh, I mean another party or different parties in the dis have a dispute, how can that Imam be the person to console them? How can that imam, that's why they are not political. They shouldn't be. But desperation, he will say anything. But it's not going to win him votes. God knows how many of those people would ever even vote for him. Or even to the city. Or they don't even have the influence, as I said. Time have changed. Especially in the KMC and the, I mean, uh, um, I mean, and the BAC. Things have, are so difficult, it's up to uh, political parties to go there to give them hope. And, and guarantee them a better future. But but Barak cannot do that. He cannot go there and tell them. His people cannot go there and tell them. All the thing they have to do is to go and prick against the uh, uh, UDP. But now, what is the other political parties doing to counter and, and bring the national issues and get the votes? This is things that we need to figure out. And, um, and we had, we have seen the, um, the back last year, the two imams feuding. The first imam said something, Mr. Sidi. Exactly, I, I mean, I've not heard it, but he insulted the uh, the the other imams or most I mean that do marabout stuff, that do the marabout stuff. He called himself Sunni. You see, again, we have to be very careful. Sectarian violence. We said this before when they went for the uh, Ahmadiyya. Let's stop. Let's stop this. If the Ahmadiyya, they will come for you. Now they are not coming, going for the Ahmadiyya. They are coming for us. But it's interesting that this guy talk about this thing. But he did not go for the president. He he, he chooses because apparently he's associated with the president. Apparently, but he should have gone for the president. That said that he did this. He confessed to this. No, he chose to attack. It's easier attack the other people um the um um, um what do you call them again the other muslims that do the setting to he attacked them but again <coughs> regardless of what he said it was completely wrong for bakao sutu to come out to dare make a statement to threaten someone's life and i don't know why he chose november 11. To go ahead, going with his disciple to do this. Interesting, it had to take 48 hours for statement to come out. But again, the president is one of the people that fell in these things because of the push. I mean, I mean, the position he's standing to talk about this. <clears throat> I, I read an extra on Modu um, this thing about Sadawa. Sadawa was. Um, a, 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 the extract let me try and find this extract just shows you what a presidential uh, presidential person is and for people who, who normally just go it's this is very <coughs> inter <coughs> modula min kanaji wrote this uh extract from sadawra's book 
Even when I moved into the Prime Minister's residence at Number One Marina, I could hear slander directly at us through the loud uh, loudspeakers screaming through the night from 300 meters away at Sam Jack Terrace or a little further away at Albion Place. As Prime Minister, he can hear the slander throughout the night on loudspeaker. You see, the majority then? But even though most of it was fallacious that their tribe about my being of the lineage of a leather smith and too low in society, so social ranks to run government. He was insulted. He was insulted that much. He never fell for it. He never fell for it. Because he's a leader. He's a leader. He's the president. Let's move on. Um, it was also the um, um, ir uh, irrational cause of arrogance among certain elements within the PPP who saw their chiefly lineage as their right to office and leadership in the party, no matter how crude their vision or un un unlearn their methods. The PPP was far from being an ethnic party. It was a national party and could not be ruled by such unacceptable standards that consider people inferior on account of caste in, into which they were born. Kairaba 208, page 208. You see, tells you the sophistication of this gentleman. And I can remember as kids. You know, that time this ragamuffin thing came in, that reggae language came in. And Bo, Bo Selector, wicked, wicked Bo Selector. And um, Saudi they came to Bacow. And because the youths were saying, Bo, Bo, wicked, I mean. But for, for the word wicked, we know as good. I mean, it's like a praise. Bo, wicked, select the Bo, wicked. Now, Saudi was really offended because of the word wicked. You see, the insult about his lineage or anything never affected him that much for him to react. But for hearing youths coming out agitating, saying, Whoa, wicked. And he said at the Bantaba, and we laugh about it. Malong Bo, what Bo means? Malong Bo, 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 Sound out of first address because of the Bacchus kids calling it bow wicked. But you didn't hear Sound of the turn around to say that their parents sent them to say this. The youth, it's something, a language they don't even understand because that then the music came, they hear the bow wicked. Sound. But as we grow up, we even know that bow wicked was a deceit. Did they mean that? No. These are important things we need to know. But let me just quickly play some of the videos and just for um, people to hear the videos themselves. And I'll just do a quick analysis. You um, you forgive me some of my... Um, I think my interpretation will be right. Let me just add the volume and hopefully you will hear it. Okay, what is this all about for people that don't understand Mandinka? 
Um, Baro is saying that um, a, a member of parliament, that's Kapiture, Bakao, um, said that he should vacate the, um, the, the state house before election so that he would tamper with the state house or something like that. He's agitated about that. Now, he is trying to use that to put a um, point. He said that um, before he was elected, the chairs, the chairs in his house, in his house, were far better than the chairs at this present day at the state house. He's literally saying that he was a made up man. He was rich, he was made up man. And um, he, he did not just make this as a passing statement. He repeated it to say that his, the chair from his house the before he was elected president was better than the chair at the state house. Now, we all know that's, that's not a fact, that's a lie. And we have seen there's nothing um, wrong coming out of poverty. He should celebrate that. But no, because now he has to justify it. Because he is scared life after presidency. Because the amount of wealth he has accumulated in four years is not his salary. Property is got everywhere else. Now he's trying to justify this. But that's the problem with his mind. He's desperate to think that Gambians will believe this. He already has started to believe it because he keep on repeating it on his head. He's not sleeping. But now, this is the thing, thing that now Gambians have to explain to other um, Gambians to understand. The other bit is, he continued to say that he is going to stay here, stay in the Gambia after his uh, time. I mean, leaving office because of he was already made up. This is this is why because it's fair. Now he's trying to give a plausible statement. But I mean, in the court of law, we'll see whether that this statement will stand. Evidence have to be produced. But he moved on to say something again to attack, attack the diaspora. He did not use the word diaspora selectively. He said people in Tuvalu means people in white man country diaspora. He said that's that's is very offensive. Because Adam Abaro, that's what he does. He takes a fact and misrepresents the fact, fabricate. He said that people in the diaspora ask for his pictures to make t-shirts and this thing. Up to today, he have not seen a picture. I'll explain to Gambians what happened then. Because I was behind the scenes and I know some of these things that happened. Tukulorsi. Tukulorsi. Everybody know Tukulorsi. I'm going to name her name. Um, Tukulorsi and Farkama and others. They wanted, because they were Juka Sisi and all that, they wanted a good picture, um, a digitized picture of Barak, because he was not looking good, so that it can be used as campaign material. You, if you look at the, even the picture in, um, the picture he have and, um, um, uh, in that thingy, what do you call it? In the, at the, on the ballot, with his finger there, with, with this daume and everything, was not, I mean, what we wanted to listen, uh, portray as president. And b these ladies went out there to sort out for pictures. We cannot find pictures. Now, I think Manka, I think Manka had a problem, in, in fact. I think Yaya Jame arrested Manka. I think Yaya Jame arrested Manka. Now, Manka was given this task to take pictures and enhance the pictures. And those were the pictures that we were using to campaign online. The pictures were not to be printed for any, it was to be campaign online, to take those pictures, digitalize and campaign online. But now he has to command Aragos. That's why he never wanted us to have a vote. He doesn't want us to have a vote. And remember, Gambians have to remember, we have two, two weeks to elections. The money and resources, we have to use it well. And people have seen the t-shirts produced by the diaspora. We have seen, people have seen the amount of t-shirts and, and the and what was provided. And the amount of money provided is accounted for from GDF. It's accounted for, and that's only what, is, what came from GDF, almost five million, I think. Uh, you, would not, you just don't know how much money went on the two channels. Because in back, uh, give you an example in Bacau, few days before election, three days before elections, resources were not in Bacau. The the coalition money they already started their corruption. The money did not trickle down to Bacau because we were doing contingency planning. 
Now we were looking at things like uh, touch lights and things like that in case they switch the lights off and so on. And people in Sweden can remember this because most of the guys in Bakau were in Sweden. Now we had to do, do a funding, I mean to mobilize funds to target Bakau, just Bakau. To provide for people in Bakau, um, I mean, I mean, Lucky, John Lucky in America can bear me witness in this. Um, Ita Sar in America can bear me witness, witness in this. The amount of money collected, I can remember, but for Bakau, we had to even collect money three days, emergency for Bakau, and other constituencies have done that. Bamba Mas will bear me witness in this. There's one other emergency in a forum we were the money. Money for transport was not av av available, and they had to vouch. They had to vouch for the that let them um, continue, and the money would be paid. I'm not just talking about the money from GDF because we all seen the transfers. What was transfer for Farmer to Tambajang, and the last transfer, transfer for something that was something like that. Uh, one of the members, but the other channels, God knows. In the Gambia, in the Gambia, I mean, I'm not talking about the diaspora now, in the Gambia and all the diasporans, the amount of money produced in within the Gambia, because when it gets to a few days before they get to the combo, when they see the I mean, people in Basse and others, encourage Gambians inside the Gambia to start to believe that ah, this time around it's possible. They put it, and when they get to the combo, two days, three days, I tell you, the money wa was just available for the collision. Um, I mean, just tells you the kind of person he is. He's all so ungrateful. Now he want to just make himself to be be everything. Let's just listen to the other one. Guys, this is something to do with the UDP. UDP can reply on that. But this is my point here. It's not about the UDP. I'm talking about on facts. I'm talking on facts. If anybody can remember the first Njagochoy impasse, when the first Njagochoy impasse happened in 1990, is it 19, early 1996? We all know UDP did not have money. I know that. I know that. But in the struggle, what we believe in, that anybody opposed Yaya would be part of us. We have people than, 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 that oppose us in the struggle. The minute Yaya arrests them, we stand out and fight for them. That's what was the mantra. Regardless, we fight for you. And that's what was our relationship with the UDP and other parties. Anything against CIA, we are in for. Let other people play their partisans, but for us, that was our um, thinking. We know the financial status of the UDP. Deplete, I mean, that's what opposition is. And there's nothing. I mean, the first thing I got to I don't, I don't want to name that person's name here. I remember. And that person reminded me of this person's name, Adam Abaro. Money was meant to go to fast Njagochoy. And the person called the sister and said to, and called, he contacted the UDP diaspora here and they given the name Adam Abaro and his number. And he spoke to Adam Abaro and said to Adam Abaro that, uh, okay, this amount of money, go and pick it up for my sister to support the uh, impasse in fast Njagochoy. The 
Adam Abaro went and picked up the money, but never called back to say that he received the money. Even though the sister have said, why did you know you have to have a house? The person in the United Kingdom that instructed money to be paid called Adam Abaro and said to Adam Abaro that you have to have a house. Yes, you have to have a house. You have to have a house. You have to have a house. He said he's not going to fast Jagat Choy because he doesn't want to be in the problem. For what reason? The guy just know that he have to wait for something. I don't know. I don't want to be mystical here. But he did not go. That's that's one way the UDP was uh, financed. A meeting in 1996 occurred before Solar Sending was arrested. I organized a meeting for UDP in Bakau. I financed the UDP meeting in Bakau. Bankamani will be my witness. Dembo Bojang, Dembo by force will be my witness because and other people in Bakau will be my witness. Some of them are in MPP now. Some of them are in UDP now. How I mobilize them and how I encourage them. Uh, the MP in Bakau, um, um, Kapituri, in fact, that was the in, what encouraged Kapi to go into politics. It was true that moment, that was when Yajame started to threaten Bakau that he's coming to bring the witch hunters. And that was a strategy to bring a resistance in Bakau. It was to organize a resistance in Bakau. That meeting we sponsored. I put the greater amount of these things sponsored. That, uh, that was a reason. The reason why is to resist uh, um, uh, Jambe. It was to resist them and everything. This you see, people have done a lot, and the UDP have never claimed to be more rich. I mean, every money they they raise themselves. But this guy talking about the monies and everything else just tells you the kind of passing we have in 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 in, in government. Just tells you the kind of person we have as a president. He's divisive. This is whatever you have, even if he had even put money in there, who became the president? Him. Who benefited him? But and this is the smallest that he has done. I, I remember the, some people I have a problem with in UDP before, when they were in government. And the, some, the person I really respect, I said, oh, look, you, don't, uh, you guys don't even know about I said, recently, Biden Barrow have said statements against the family that brought him up in Banjo when he became a president. I said, when I had the statements Barrow made, and the person to, uh, could not even believe what I said, I said, you will, you will find, find out yourself. The statement he made against Alaji Musa and Jai, the statement he made about this person's family, I said, this guy should not, I mean, be close to. And now this is happening. Now that person called me recently and said, that what you said to me before is, is proven now. The, um, the statements this guy is making, but if you continue on that, um, if you continue on that, um, I mean, talk. That's how he continued. But I'm looking for certain things here. Let me see the third one. Uh, the volume is at max. Oh, sorry, that is not that. That's about. For people that don't understand Manika, this is another classic uh, barrel. Now he said, he said during the tour, this was this is this is not the coalition tour. This is the UDP tour. You know when he was um, nominated as a UDP this thing. I think uh, I'm sorry, I'm not sorry. He didn't make it clear. Might be the UDP tour, might be the coalition tour. But this time uh, the executive of UDP were in prison. 
this is um uh, this is when it happened whether it's the udp tour or the coalition tour he said he, they went to Bansan. i don't i know Bansan, but i don't know where that came from Bansan. i don't know where the housing Bansan. i don't know how big it is or whatever the situation there he said they went there straight to spend the night there the people i mean i mean he the way he said it is they drove them like dogs but Usainu Dabo's brother, Yaya Dabo, I think he, he says in America, made a call and send them to a motel. He did not specify that whether the guy paid for the motel or not, and I suspect the guy paid for the motel. The guy provided a motel for them. Now, just just look at this now. We were not there. Now, uh, the we the homesteads in provinces. You come from a campaign and with all the things you with your stuff you want to get in what condition do those people were and actually now knowing adam about what did they say how did they say it did they actually drove you out or did they give you an, a plausible um explanation how did yaya Dabo know about it the family must have appealed to yaya oh this is the situation that's what i think but just tells you the kind of person we are end of the day you went to a motel why does it important to bring this out? Now, you see, as a president, as I give, that's why I give example of uh, uh, I mean, Jawara. Jawara, as he said, as a prime minister, every in the night, when he moving as a prime in the night, loudspeakers will be going out, calling his lineage, uh, that you are not fit for be this, and he did not make him react anyway. He tried to bring Gambians together and if politics come he goes for his politics but this is the um, and what we have but we we come to the other bits I um, mean uh, with the Imams let's just listen to this <laughs> um, development for him is what is in Banjo with all the corruption he did 35 million this is what we have and now we see how expensive it is to pay for this you see um we could have done that we could have better roads we could have better drainage we could have um and uh, uh, banjon be rehabilitated in a better way as our capital city as a heritage city this government should have even had the, i mean as a transition to put in the, the the competent authority or the body that would have think of transformation to think how are we going to have our future capital city? By now, Gambia could have half the master plan to say that Gambia capital city would be there and that's, that's, that would be part of our 50 year development plan and when it's going to happen, what is going to happen in the five or ten years. This is the kind of transformation we're thinking of. But no, everything is about how to make a deal. Now he's saying that he's going to do the same thing to Serekunda. And lying that you have to, what up, you, I mean, I mean, probably he's talking about another banjo. But let us not be surprised. This is the same person who said the German uh, president came and said the Banyan was beautiful. And he believed in that. Whether the German said that or not, if he don't understand the sarcasm about that, if he German have said that, just tell you the kind of person we have. But there's more on here. Um,
again, this is what I'm saying now. Now the opposition will have to choose. Are they going to continue the conversation to be about this? About UDP and PP? Is it about attacks? Or is it about going out there to talk about policies? How do we do that? That's our strategy for us to do, as opposition, to change the narrative. He wants this narrative. That's the narrative he wants. But this narrative is destabilizing. He is, I mean, that's where, why we see now the imams, I mean, I mean, I mean, wanting to fight because of this kind of narrative going on. And it's getting into the people. As a president, you don't say certain things. An idiot on Facebook can say something. It doesn't make it right, but we know he's an idiot. It's not someone voted in office. But someone voted in office been so um, complex, inferior to complex. But I'll tell you that there's more to this. When he said elites, this is not about UDP. As I said, and you will hear it again, the word elite is new in his vocal blurry, and because of the people that he perceived now are not supporting anymore. On the ground, they are starting to hate their bets. And I'm going to, I know there's a rant going on. I'm not going to refer to the rant, respect to the person, but let's just watch. Don't celebrate quick. Go and look at the rant that Mohammed Jadid against the GGI. Tells you what is going on, brewing up. It's the cabal itself. The cabal itself. And Gambia, if we're not careful, even the next government, these people come and capture you. If we need a change, a firm change, we have to make sure we inform our people so that we can hold this government accountable, but not only Adam Abara accountable, but the next government coming, and that we have to prepare. Let us not fall for these divisive messages. As I said, the, someone like Sadauda should be an example, how he managed himself, but it was even difficult, and that's why he, we end up very... Yeah. This is about um, Dembo Boja saying about the imams to be political. I mean, what does this, I mean, evidence of the desperation? As I said, they failed to form a political party. They failed to have a structure in the political party. They failed to have a, the capacity required in a political party. They don't have an ideology. They don't have a vision. It's all about money. Everybody's coming out around for the money. They're going to mobilize based on money. They, 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 they try to form the party based on an, an NRP. Now there's a problem with that. They try to form a party to, to take as much as possible from UDP. They cannot do that. They try to do the same thing to GDC and other parties. They cannot. They try to take the APRC. It did not possible. Now what's left? Now it's KMC and BAC. They said that they need to consolidate. If they have any vote there, they can win the elections. That's their, that's their campaign. But the campaign is nasty. What we have to do is to change that campaign. And it's up to us to do that. To change the narrative. But again, the other point is here. What are we doing in order to make sure we have the vote in KMC and BAC? That's what the, our task is, guys. I think the, 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 the debate should be going on now um, um, in the Gambia and um, to be watched on social media. Thank you very much, guys. Have a good day.